Today's lesson is, is it a right triangle? This is also called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And I know it sounds a little bit difficult, sounds a little bit strange, but it's actually very, very easy, especially now that you've learned how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is what our lesson worksheet looks like today. So you should have, whoops, you should have a copy of this. Um, if you don't have a copy of this, you can still follow along or you can maybe copy the problems down, stop the video and copy the problems down and just follow along. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for us so that you can see everything. Okay, so this lesson is called, Is It a Right Triangle? Here's the problem. Determine whether or not the given triangles and or measures form a right triangle. Explain how you know. All right, so first of all, before we start, let's underline something important, which is the definition of the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem states that if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's a right triangle, right? So in other words, if the three measures work in the right triangle, or they work when you put them into that formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then that means it is a right triangle. And if it doesn't work when you put the values in a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's not a right triangle. So we're gonna look at some examples of both so you can see what it is that I'm talking about here. All right, first thing we're gonna do is label the sides of our triangle. So remember, we've got two legs and we've got a hypotenuse. Now, here's our triangle. Here's our right angle. Remember the two sides that make the right angle are the legs. So five is a leg, 12 is a leg. The side that is opposite or across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So 13 is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Well, what we think is a right triangle, we're gonna check it, right? So I'm always gonna start with my formula of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, we're always gonna start there. Now I'm gonna replace my values very carefully. I wanna make sure that we always put the hypotenuse in place of C. So I'm gonna write a little note. I know I did this over and over again with the last lesson, but let's just keep that up. The hypotenuse always goes in place of C. So the five and the 12 are gonna go in place of A or B. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. I can do five, 12, or I can do 12, five. But what I have to make sure I definitely do is put the 13 over here because the, the hypotenuse is always the longest length. All right, let's figure this out. So we've got five squared is 25. We've got 12 squared is 144 and we have 13 squared is 169. So if we add these together and this left side is equal to 169, then that means it's gonna be a right triangle. If it equals something different, then it's not gonna be a right triangle. Now, when I add 25 plus 144, I do get 169. So since this is a true statement right here, that means yes, it is a right triangle, right? This is a true statement, right? 169 does in fact equal 169. So this is a right triangle. All right, so make a little note there. All right, let's move on to the next one. So for this next example, again, I'm gonna start out with my formula of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're gonna check all of them using this formula. I'm gonna look at my three measures. Now, most of the time, they will give them to you in order. They'll give you the leg, the leg, and the hypotenuse. But every now and then, they're gonna to try to trick you and they'll slip the longest side in one of these two places in the front so you just have to be aware that the longest side is always gonna be the hypotenuse. Okay, these are in order from least to greatest, so that means this is my hypotenuse over here. I'm just gonna put my numbers right into the equation. I've got six squared plus eight squared equals 14 squared. And I'm gonna start doing a little math here. Six squared is 36, eight squared is 64, and 14 squared is 196. So when I add these together, if they equal 196, we've got ourselves another right triangle. But if they equal something else, then it's not a right triangle. 36 plus 64 is 100. 
and 100 certainly does not equal 196, right? So this is a false statement right here. And that means that this is not a right triangle. Okay, so just to recap, you are simply putting your values in a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you do the math and it works out, both sides are equal and it's a true statement, it is a right triangle. If you do the math and you end up with a different number on each side of the equal sign, that's a false statement and therefore it is not a right triangle. All right, let's scooch down to the bottom here. So I think this is kind of an easy lesson. You might be ready to try these on your own right now, but if you're not, you can watch me do a few more, but feel free to stop the video at any time and do these problems on your own, and then you can always restart the video and check your answers. All right, so for this one, we've got 16, 63, and 65. I'm gonna start out with my Pythagorean theorem because that is what we are always going to do. Now, like I said, Usually they're gonna give you these numbers in order from least to greatest, which they did. So I'm just gonna put my values in. I've got a 16 squared here, I've got a 63 squared here, and I'm gonna see if that equals 65 squared. Okay, now I'm gonna break out my calculator, right? I don't need my calculator for 16 squared. I know that that's 256. However, I do not know what 63 squared is or what 65 squared is. So I'm definitely gonna use a calculator for that. So 63 squared is 3,969. And 65 squared, whoops, I just hit the wrong button on my calculator. 65 squared is 4,225. I'm gonna add these numbers together on the left side and I'm gonna see what happens. All right, when I added these together, I got 4,225, which of course equals 4,225. So this is a true statement right here, right? That's a true statement. So I would say, yes, that is a right triangle, right? And the directions here say to determine whether or not each set of measures forms a right triangle and explain. I don't know about you, but I think all this work right here looks like a perfect explanation to me. Okay, let's go over to number two. So this triangle is like kind of not straight, you know, it's like kind of, I don't know, turned around a little bit. So we just want to make sure that we're labeling our a squared plus b squared equals c squared properly, right? We're substituting the right numbers. All right, we've got our three measures here. Here's my right angle. Right across from my right angle is gonna be the hypotenuse. It's also the longest side, which is 29. And these other two are the legs. So I can put the 20 and the 21 in place of A or B. I can do it in either order, but I'll just go from least to greatest. So I have 20 squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. Okay, 20 squared is 400, 21 squared is 441, and when I do 29 squared, I get 841. I'm gonna add these two numbers on the left side, and when I do that, I get 841 equals 841. Look at this, we have another true statement, so we have another right triangle. So I'm gonna say yes, that is a right triangle right there. Okay, let's move on to number three. I have my right angle. I'm gonna look across from my right angle to label my hypotenuse. These other two are my legs. And let's start out with a squared plus b squared equals c squared as always. All right, let's see if we get three in a row here. So I've got 33 and 55, those are my two legs. So 33 squared plus 55 squared. And we're gonna see if that equals 65 squared. 33 squared is 1,089. I just did that on my calculator. 55 squared is 3,025. And now we need to do 65 squared, right? We already did 65 squared up on this one, so I don't have to do it again. It's 4,225. 
All right, let's add these together. So I have 1,089 plus 3,025, and that gives me 4,114 equals 4,225. That is definitely not true, right? This is a false statement right here. So we're gonna say that this one, unfortunately, is not a right triangle. I had a feeling we weren't gonna get three in a row. All right, let's check out this last one. So this one is a little bit unusual because look at this right here, right? We've got a radical as one of our measures. All right, here we go. We we'll start out with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm gonna put my numbers in place of my variables. So I've got two squared plus five squared. Now watch this one. I've got the square root of 29 squared. All right, so two squared is four, five squared is 25. Now, whenever you have the square root of a number squared, putting a number to the second power and finding the square root of it are inverse operations. Just like adding and subtracting cancel each other out, multiplying and dividing cancel each other out, Putting a number to the second power and then finding the square root will also cancel each other out. So this and this cancel, and what you're left with is whatever is inside that radical. So the square root of 29 squared just equals 29. Now, if you don't believe me, you can grab your calculator. And if you do 29 to the second power, you're gonna get 841. And then if you find the square root of 841, it's gonna take you right back to 29 again. So the square root of 29 squared is just 29. Okay, we add this together. Four plus 25 equals 29. Look at this, we have another one, right? This is a true statement. So we're gonna say yes, right? This one is a right triangle. All right, so hopefully you found the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to be a pretty easy lesson. I think it sounds a lot scarier than it is, but it really is easy. Um, please ask questions in class tomorrow if there's anything that you don't understand. And of course, if I am not your teacher, you're going to ask your own math teacher tomorrow. And obviously, he or she will be very happy to help you.